Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. Our book club is having its monthly meeting tomorrow night and yours truly is hosting. I thought it would be fun to serve a Middle Eastern dinner for the event. I'm going to make falafel and pita bread. We are going to start with the pita bread. So what I have here is six cups or about 780 grams of all-purpose or plain flour. I'm going to remove just a half cup of this flour and set it aside. We will use some of this flour for dusting later on. Then I need two cups or 470 mils of warm water and four teaspoons of active dry yeast. And I should mention that I am doubling this recipe. We also need one teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to give this a stir with my Danish dough whisk. You could use any spoon or whisk here. Then I need one cup of the flour. It's about 130 grams. What we were doing is making a sponge for the pita bread. Apparently, the sponge gives pita breads and certain other breads an improved texture and taste. And then we have to set this aside for about 15 minutes or until the mixture turns bubbly. And we do not have to cover the bowl. Our sponge is nice and bubbly, so now I want to add a teaspoon of kosher or coarse salt and four tablespoons of a posh olive oil, meaning the best olive oil you can afford. I'm also going to add the remaining flour and stir until a shaggy dough develops. Spoiler alert! Everyone in my book club loved the homemade pita bread, falafel, and the tzatziki and tahini sauces that I served for dinner. I will link all of the recipes in the description below. This is what a shaggy dough looks like. Now I am doubling this recipe because the recipe as written makes only seven or eight pita breads and I need more than that for our book club meeting. Fortunately, pita bread freezes well. I'm going to add a little flour to my board. Put a little flour on top of the dough. And then I need to knead this dough just briefly, just for a minute or two. So the dough is not fully kneaded yet, but it has come together. So now I want to cover this and let it rest under a towel for just 10 minutes. And while the dough is resting, I shall wash out the mixing bowl. I washed and dried my bowl. The dough has rested for 10 minutes. So now we have to knead the dough just until it becomes fairly smooth. And remember, we are not making a loaf of bread here. These are flat breads. So we don't have to knead too long, probably five minutes or so. And I'm not going to add any additional flour unless the dough becomes extra sticky. You could knead this dough in a KitchenAid stand mixer, but I like working with yeast doughs. I like kneading them by hand. And when you knead, you simply push out the dough, fold it over on itself, and then push it out again. And just like that, in about five minutes, our dough is ready. So it's fairly smooth. Now I'm going to form it into a ball. Then, 
might need to grease the bowl with a little olive oil. Add the dough and turn it around so the, the sides are greased. Invert the dough so the top, now the bottom, is greased. And then we need to let the dough rise until it has nearly doubled in volume. That will take one hour, maybe 19 minutes. And here is our dough, nicely doubled in volume. That only took about one hour. Now, the pita will bake in a cast iron skillet. Excuse me, a ripping hot cast iron skillet. So I'm going to put this skillet in the oven and preheat the oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit or 250 degrees Celsius. So now we can tip the dough onto a clean work surface, pat it out, and then we need to divide the dough in half. Then I want to form each half into eight pieces. Shore up the sides. Then we can transfer these pieces to parchment, cover them. This is a towel that a very kind viewer sent. And do the same with the other half of dough. Now we need to form each of the segments of dough into a ball. And to do that, you take the ends of the dough and pull them under. So we are creating surface tension on the top. There, a perfect little sphere. We can start forming the pita breads. So I have my ball of dough here. I'm going to add a pinch of flour. Put another pinch of flour on top. Flatten into a disc. And then we need to roll this out to anywhere from six to eight inches. have many different rolling pins to choose from today. I have this little number, this one, which looks kind of cool, and a good old-fashioned, very heavy rolling pin. You want to roll these out rather thinly. Transfer that to the parchment paper, and then I can do another Oh, we are still waiting for the oven to preheat. These pita breads are not only great for falafel, they're great for turning into pizza. My oven is preheated, so let's start baking off this pita bread. So you saw how this pita ballooned. As soon as you take it out of the oven, wrap it in a towel. That way the pita won't dry out. And of course, it will deflate. I'm going to bake off the remaining pita breads. Bake the pita for two minutes or until it fully balloons. Then flip the bread and continue baking for just one minute. And number 16. I'm going to need an extra towel. I do want to taste of one of these pitas while it's still hot from the oven. Look, we have a pocket. 
This is fresh and yeasty and absolutely wonderful. When all of the pita has cooled, I will seal it in Ziploc bags and then they will be ready to rewarm tomorrow. I need to pick up ingredients for the falafel, so let's make a quick trip to the farm store. home again and we are getting ready to make the falafel. Now falafel refers to a little Middle Eastern ball that is super crispy on the outside and soft and tender and fragrant on the inside. I absolutely love falafel. And the first ingredient is one cup of chickpeas and you want to use dried chickpeas not canned and you need to soak them for at least 12 hours or preferably overnight. And I did soak mine overnight. So we can drain them off and tip them into the work bowl of a food processor. Then we need half of one onion, which I'm going to just coarsely chop. Throw the onion into the food processor. Then we need four or five garlic cloves, smashed, or the equivalent in garlic paste. Next is a half cup of parsley leaves, just coarsely chopped. This is the parsley that you and I purchased at the farm store earlier today. I have parsley seedlings that I am growing under lights, but they are way too small to use right now. And you do want to use fresh herbs for falafel. The herbs just contribute that very fresh fragrance. You do not have to be exact with measuring these ingredients beyond the chickpeas. If you want to use more parsley or less, you certainly may. Into the food processor they go. Then we need some sage leaves, about three large leaves or five medium-sized leaves. And this is the sage that we bought at the farm store. Just coarsely chop them. I absolutely love sage. I love its smoky perfume. Add one and a half teaspoons of salt, several grinds of black pepper, one teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of ground coriander seed, a half teaspoon cayenne pepper, one and a half tablespoons of either chickpea flour or regular wheat flour, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and two teaspoons of lemon juice. I'm going to pulse the machine four or five times just to break up the ingredients. Then scrape down the bowl. Then we can turn the machine on and process this mixture until a fairly smooth dough develops. The mixture is ready when a small clump holds its shape in the palm of your hand. It smells just wonderful. I'm going to transfer this mixture to a bowl. This smells lusciously lemony. I will cover this with cling film and then 
pop it into the refrigerator until we are ready to form the little balls and fry them off. If you want to fry the falafel right away, just put the falafel mixture in the refrigerator while you heat the oil. Of course, we're going to do that tomorrow. Sweet dreams, and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. I hope you slept well last night. Our book club meeting is tonight, so I am going to make a couple of sauces to accompany the pita bread and falafel. And the first sauce is called tzatziki. It's a cucumber sauce, really delicious, very easy to make. And you need one English cucumber, and we need to grate the cucumber. I'm going to grate mine right here on this box grater. I like English cucumber because it's not at all bitter and you do not have to peel it. The skin is very tender. And I'm putting the grated cucumber in a medium-sized bowl and then we have to relieve the cucumber of its liquid. So I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of salt. Give this a quick mix with my hand. And then I will let this sit here while the juices escape. And while we wait for that to happen, I'm going to mince some mint leaves. I will need about a tablespoon of finely minced mint. Then I need a tablespoon of finely minced dill. Oh, this dill smells wonderful as does the mint. I will also need two cups or about 450 mils of Greek yogurt, the juice of half a lemon, and garlic paste. Look at all of the liquid that came out of this cucumber. I'm going to squeeze the cucumber in a clean towel. just to release as much liquid as possible. Almost a quarter cup of liquid came out of that cucumber. And of course, the cucumber itself will be a fraction of its original size. Now we can return the cucumber to its bowl, add the yogurt to the bowl. And again, this is Greek yogurt. Add three to four teaspoons of garlic paste, one tablespoon of minced mint leaves, one tablespoon of minced dill, and the juice from half a lemon. And use a mixing fork to stir all of the ingredients together. I need to taste this. It might need some extra salt. It's delicious, but surprisingly, it does need a little more salt. Clean spoon. We can cover this with cling film and then pop it into the refrigerator until close to serving time. I'm also going to make a lemon tahini sauce for the falafel. And for this, we need 3 fourths cup or 177 mils of tahini. Tahini is just ground toasted sesame seeds. It's like peanut butter. And you do want to stir this really well. Tip this right into the work bowl of a food processor. Add one or two teaspoons of garlic paste, a cup of fresh chopped parsley leaves, and a half cup of freshly squeezed lemon or lime juice. Now we need to blend this until it becomes thick. Thick 
thickened up very quickly. Of course, we want to be able to drizzle this over the falafel, so we need to thin it out with water. Add enough water or lemon juice or a combination of the two until you achieve the consistency you desire. This is one of those sauces that you can really play around with. Mine has thinned out quite a bit, but it is still too thick. Instead of adding more water, this time I'm going to add lemon juice. I will post the recipe for both the tzatziki sauce and this lemon tahini sauce in the description below. This is so delicious that I went ahead and doubled the recipe. I think our book club is really going to love both of the sauces we made today. Put the surplus in another little pitcher. Going to cover these and then pop them into the refrigerator. I'm not going to fry off the falafel just yet because the book club meeting is not for several hours. So I will clean up my workstation. Then we're going to make a quick trip to the flower store. I want to make a very simple arrangement for the parlor. Here are the flowers and some greenery called Ruscus that we purchased at Chatham Flowers. It was very nice to see little Harry there. Harry is the dog. Now, this book club meeting is very informal, so we're not doing a big table setting in the dining room. I'm just going to set up in the parlor. And I do want the parlor to look nice which is why I'm doing flowers there. Flower preservative. Hold on, I want to fetch my revolving cake stand. I don't think I've ever actually used this stand for a cake, but I do like to use it for flower arranging. I'm going to clean this up, and then we can form and fry off the falafel. All right, it's time to form the falafel and fry them. And while I'm forming the falafel, I'm going to heat the oil so I have my 
little thermometer here. I ordered this on Amazon. I need to heat two to three inches of oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. I'm using avocado oil because it has a high smoke point. I'm going to form the falafel into roughly one inch diameter balls. So I have a roughly one inch diameter scoop here. You want to firmly pack the mixture into the scoop and then release it. So I managed to achieve 21 falafel from that one cup of chickpeas plus the herbs. And I'm just flattening them a little. The oil is at the correct temperature, so now we can fry off the falafel. I'm using the spider to lower five of the falafel into the oil. And we will fry them just until they turn golden. This falafel is so easy to make and so unbelievably delicious that I wish that I had doubled the recipe. So here are the fried falafel, and I cannot wait to taste of one. I'm going to make a little pita sandwich. So I have my pita here. Then I have a nice pocket to hold the falafel. I'm going to put some baby arugula leaves in here. And so you could also add cucumber and tomato onion, whatever you like. I'm going to put a couple of falafel and just a drizzle of the lemon tahini. So this is homemade falafel in the homemade pita bread. The falafel are super crispy on the outside. They are soft and super perfumed on the inside. I absolutely love them. And I think the book club members will enjoy them too. And before the book club people come, I will slip the tray of falafel into a 200 degree oven just to warm the falafel. I will also throw some of the pita bread into the warm oven. And that way, the falafel and the pita will be warm when I serve them. Well, I really hope that you will give the falafel and the homemade pita bread a try someday. Both are really easy to do. And now I need to get myself cleaned up and get ready for our book club meeting. And I wanted to mention that the book we read this time is Master Slave, Husband, Wife by Ilion Wu. It is a terrific read. It is nonfiction. The story is pretty shocking. Um, I really enjoyed it and I felt that I got a real history lesson from this book. Our club has read several books this year. Let's see, we read The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, which I loved. Uh, we read Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, another great read. We read Chekhov's short stories and well, several other books. In the comments below, let me know if you've read a good book lately. I'd like to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. I can post a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, please treat yourself very well, and I will see you in the next episode.
Bye, friends.